Well, it is an absolutely beautiful morning at the cottage. I'm going to be doing a little bit of planting today before we shoot this, or I guess as we shoot this walkabout. <laughs> Yesterday, I went to Bricks and I got some two flats of this beautiful ajuga, which will soften the edge of this white garden space here where I've got my gorgeous Encore Azaleas the Moondance hydrangeas behind them, these beautiful Terra hydrangeas right here. And look, I've, I've made a decision, a key decision. This is the Terra hydrangea that I brought from the other house. Look at these gorgeous blooms. It's blooming heavily even in this pot. Love, love, love them. So just imagine, if you will, what this will look like when all of these are this size or larger and blooming in this fabulous, fabulous white. Well, yeah, I wonder so, if people know how big those get. Yeah, these these will get huge. I mean, let's do a bigger close than up football and, size, guys. Yeah, I mean, let's do it. Let's do a close up on this. And these make the most beautiful dried hydrangeas ever. So these will get larger than they are right now. Maybe not as large as they would get if this were already planted in the ground or if it had stayed in residence at the other house. But nevertheless, look how healthy the foliage is. It's really gonna be gorgeous. And then these other ones are new. So I will have four of them in total beautifully blooming white. And then I've got just a couple of other things that I've stuck in here, which might be moved. These came from my, my friend, Carolina Elizabeth. These are, I, I believe she said there were some kind of aster, uh, but I will just see what they do. They may or may not stay there, but they needed to get into the ground. So along this edge, this metal edge that forms the border of these beautiful hydrangeas. I'm going to be planting, hey guys, Stuart's, Stuart's waving to you. <laughs> I'm going to be planting, uh, I'm going to be planting a whole bunch of this gorgeous, just bugle weed, aka ajuga, and maybe a little bit of this creeping wire vine or Muhlenbeckia. And most of the time it will come back. If I mulch it pretty heavily, it will. Uh, sometimes it won't, but I think it will also be a sweet little element climbing over the edge. And yes, because I know you eagle-eyed viewers will tell me, but what about the Bermuda grass here? Well, I will edge this and keep it away from this border and then I'll just stay on top of it so it doesn't encroach. Um, got my favorite gloves on, so <laughs> I will be, cool job gloves. So I will be planting more of this ajuga all along the edge to soften this. And then what I am hoping is it will spill over it will begin to put out runners and it will spill over and then in these areas where I've got voids, it will start rooting and growing in between the pavers. And yes, I'll have to kind of keep an eye on all of this stuff, but I, but I will. And that's the joy of having a smaller garden, I think, is that you can really be attentive to things. And so on my morning rounds, these are the kind of things that these are the kind of things that I look for. So I think this will be beautiful. Now, why else will it be beautiful besides just the fact that it will, it makes a great ground cover and it will soften this edge? Well, I also like it because it's got this purpley tinge to it, which will look fabulous. Stuart, if you don't mind, kind of carefully just turn around to the south and look at the eastern edge of the upper terrace, aka Autumn's Edge, and you can see that there's that drift of purple that comes from all of the purple foliage plants. So from the, the beard's tongue, from the, uh, the, uh, the Nandinas, the Obsession Nandinas, the foliage of the orange rocket, which is kind of a reddish plum. But definitely there's this kind of purple foliage hue that runs down Autumn's Edge. And I just, I just love that. 
And that, and that bugle weed, the ajuga, will just kind of carry that thematic all the way through here. So some other things, some other kind of exciting things that I wanted to point out to you guys. Number one, uh, you can see that the topiary, the Eugenia topiary that we pruned last week is already starting to fill out. I keep clipping on it almost on a daily basis and pretty soon it will have a really strong form. Another thing I wanted to show you, oh and by the way, uh, stay tuned till the end because I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you what change I made based on your comments, based on follower comments. So I also wanted a little bit more of an element of height here. So I placed a pot with this two tour in it and I filled it with some of Monica scented geranium, Stuart. We need to get Monica back. We do. And they've got little blooms on them, but I love the fragrance so that when I'm sitting on the patio visiting, I can just rub them. I love the texture of the leaf. And then I planted some lemon thyme. This stuff is still filling in. And some purple million bells, which I have just cut back so it will kind of rebloom. So I'm loving the way it looks. And then, if you will come this way, I want to show you a trick. And I've showed this before, but if you look, at my pots, at this one, and also at the urns. And when we get down there, I will show you. You'll notice that this blooming lantana is very tight, and that is the form it grows in. And then it blooms profusely in this more bushy kind of way. Unlike this proven winner's uh, lantana in this purple hue that sends out just these long kind of cascading tendrils and doesn't seem to bloom as heavily. Well, I wanted this purple to bloom in kind with this multicolored yellow and cream colored lantana. So what I did was I took the long tendrils. See, in fact, Stuart, let me get out of the way. See how they're blooming over here pretty heavily? and in a similar fashion to the white and yellow. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so how I did that, and this is a no-brainer, you guys probably do it too, but as a reminder, I just took these long tendrils and I kind of wound them around the rim of the pot and then I took a florist pick and I secured it to the soil. And then what it does is instead of just blooming on the ends, on these long, lanky, wiry vines, it then forces out multiple stems along the edge, which then bloom and bloom more profusely. Does that make sense to I think it made sense to me. Okay, so <laughs> it looks really beautiful and I did that down there. So it's amazing what you can do with just a floral pick. You can secure something in place so that it not only grows in a way you want it to grow to fill the container, but it also in some respects forces it to bloom more profusely. And because I know you'll ask, this here is that beautiful Scabiola fan flower that is blooming in my color this year of purple. And the window box is really starting to fill out. In fact, look here, Stuart, this is very exciting. Some of you were saying that you missed the asparagus fern in the middle being very, very bushy. Well, look here, look at this huge new branch it put on. Isn't that fun? Oh, wow. Yeah, a whole new branch. It's got some new smaller branches that have already leafed out. I'm going to have to cut this one back because I want more of that Calibrachoa or Million Bells to spill out over the side. And I tucked some sage in there. But all of this is really, really starting to fill out. And I think it'll look great. And I would say in another week, with all of this lantana in bloom and this profusion of purple and yellow spilling over the edge, I think it will just be marvelous. Let me see if I've got any 
I've got some new buds forming on my peppers. I've already harvested about six of them and I just keep pinching back the tomato because I just want it to stay. And what kind of peppers are they? Pe behave. I, th I think these were just like a, a, I picked them when they were small and I think they were Anaheim's, but I'm picking when, them when they're very small instead of letting them get big. So I like it. I like that. It's coming along nicely. Okay, something else that I wanted to show you, which I am very, very excited about, and you guys have asked lots of questions about, and I have received box one of two of my Mother's Day gift from Hubs, which this is this is a garden shed, and I will put, Stuart, let's, can we put a picture in right yeah. here? A picture of the garden shed. I will paint it to match the trim of my house, and then I've pretty much, I think, decided where I'm going to put it in the backyard. But it, obviously, at first, it needs to be assembled, and I need to get some kind of base for it to sit on. But I, I'm very excited for that. And a little bit later, we're gonna walk back around to the back side and I'll kind of show you what I have in mind for easy accessibility. Okay, I could not be more thrilled with how well things are filling out. Can you see that, Stuart? Mm -hmm. Give me a closer look. I mean, isn't it beautiful? And it's doing just what I had hoped I have all sorts of friendly bees and butterflies just floating about. And now I have, Stuart, if you want to get on one of my steps, and I, by the way, I know you guys have been concerned. I've been adding more stepping stones, <laughs> more stepping stones so I don't compress the soil. But look at all of this Cleome and look how big it's gotten since last time we checked on it. And also the celosia, it's really getting large. Now, one thing I'm doing, and this is one of the things I do daily, is I come out here and I check to see if I want to pinch it back. And by pinching it back, that will make it bloom more heavily. So you can see here where I pinched off the main stem right there, and it will force more side branches Act. I think I'll pinch this midsection right there too. It will also make it grow in a more bushy fashion instead of just tall. Though I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch some of it back um, so that it's bushier, but then let some of it get tall so it's blooming on different levels. But this will, in short order, be a really gorgeous profusion of pink Cleome and white Gomfrina. And, the, and thank you for letting me know what Gara's common name is, and it was Whirling Butterflies, I believe. There were a couple of different names for it, but I so, so appreciate that. And that just leads me to my question of the day. <laughs> So when you're trying to come up with your plant names, um, which is easier for you to remember, the more botanical name or the common name? Because I find it kind of fascinating. Sometimes I can't come up with either one or the other. But when you're thinking of a, pro of a plant, do you tend to reference it botanically and horticulturally or by its, its common name? I think that's kind of a fascinating thing. I have really, really been very vigilant about deadheading all of the agapanthus. I've gotten a great second bloom off of the salvias, and I think I'll probably get a third bloom. So as soon as this one is finished, I will cut this back. But here's something else I, do, I don't think I showed you last time, which is so dear. I consider this to be dollhouse gardening a dollhouse form of herb gardening. Look at these sweet, what look to be tiny little boxwoods. Stuart, have I showed, you, have I showed these before? These. I don't think so. Okay, is this not so, so dear? This is the first time I've grown these before. Um, I know we've done a video at the other house on them. This is boxwood basil and it, it could not be cuter. It forms this perfect little ball that resembles a tiny boxwood. 
in the past, and I'll probably do it again this year, I've grown them in tiny pots because they look so sweet. But for the first time, I wanted to see how they would perform in the garden bed. It's really easy to start from seed, and I will try to put a link because it's not something you ever typically find uh, just when you go to your seed counter or when you go to whatever nursery or purveyor of your seeds. This you typically have to buy online, so I'll try to put a link, but it's very, very dear. And I always look, there's, there's one called um, uh, Spicy Globe, and Spicy Globe does the same thing, only it's a little bit bigger. This is even more diminutive than that. It's tiny, it's very, very cute. And you can see I've got just multiple tiny little balls all along here and I think it's very 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 dear when if you are in I've often said as, as part of my gardening manifesto that I put in my book that there are there are points in time that are moments of, of opportunities gardening opportunities and one of them is before or after a rain or during kind of a cool rainy period. And we have definitely, uncharacteristically for May, had a very cool and rainy May so far. So one thing that I typically do, if I've got a plant, this is that Lavender Veronica that I like so well. And I will put, um, I'll put a link to a Southern Living variety that's very, very similar that I really like. But what I'll do, you can see this, I have pinched it off so that it's very bushy and forms this sweet little tight mound. And I love the way this mound echoes this tiny little mound. But what I will do, just like right before it rains or right after it rains, is I will just pinch it off. And while I'm here, I'm going to do just a little bit of weeding because no weed is so small that you that you should ignore it. Go ahead and pull it when it's tiny. <laughs> so then what I'll do is I will just take, and I don't know, this piece of mulch is probably going to collapse on me. Maybe not. Just drill a little hole. And then what I'll do is I will sometimes just remove the bottom two leaves to expose the leaf node. And then I just tuck it in and secure the soil. <coughs> Excuse me. Secure the soil. And if it's a cool and rainy period and it gets regular moisture, it will do this. It will take hold it will root and it will make another tiny little plant. I think <coughs> I think I swallowed a gnat. <laughs> it happens. Excuse me. <coughs> Such are the problems of gardening, the hazards <laughs> of gardening. Okay, on this side, I want to show you what that beautiful Veronica looks like when it grows up and blooms. So this one I transplanted. I did not cut it back or do, as we call it, the Chelsea chop, where you cut it back by, oh, let's say a half to two thirds um, so that it will bloom, put out more bloom and in a bush, bushier way or put out a second bloom. But this one, I did not cut back. And look at, isn't that gorgeous? It does look cool. Beautiful, beautiful Veronica, which I would put I need to do another list of like some of my, of the 10 most heat tolerant bulletproof plants. We need to do that again, Stuart. But this is one of them. And I love the way it looks with this also tough salvia next to it. So stuff is just, it's really growing up. It's getting thick, it's filling in. I love the way the drifts, I love the way the drifts are filling out. Now, Stuart, can you just show them something pretty for just a minute? I think so. Because I need to run inside and get something. All right, we'll do a scan. Oh, 
Got it. I didn't even get halfway through it. She's too quick. So my son brought me back a couple of, of really sweet gifts from Singapore. One of them being this tiny, tiny little ceramic bowl with fish in it. So I like the blue and white. Hubs likes the fish. But look what I'm gonna fill it with. Stuart, I have enough blueberries, I think. Uh-oh. Blueberries, that's awesome. Sorry. Blueberries. I thought, <laughs> Startled I thought when you, you said, uh-oh, I thought, uh-oh, you fell or something. Not yet. <laughs> but I have enough blueberries, I think, to fill a small bowl. These are some of the rabbit eye blueberries. This that's is so a southern awesome. living plant. I will put a link. But the fact that these are burying already first year, they really seem to like it growing in this spot. I guess, I guess I need to call this area Blueberry Hill, oh, right? I like it. On Blueberry Hill. <coughs> did, you, did you get I a I don't bug? think it was an ad. I did, did you question get an it. Ad? Did you get a bug too? <clears throat> Gardening can be a dangerous sport, Stuart. Okay, so I'm just looking through here. And, and these, there are still many blueberries on here. Look, look oh, at these. I can get close to that wow, look go. at those. Here, let me get a little closer on that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a blueberry, y'all. That is a blueberry. Put my scissors down. Do you want me to hold your thing? I got it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> oh, man, you are really a talented photographer. If you can hold the camera and hold the blueberry oh, bowl. I had to do more. Okay, aren't they sweet? That's, they're huge. I know, they're wonderful. <laughs> they're and you know, I'm, I'm picking these look because I want them to keep blooming. You're going to pick one of those and just pop it in your mouth. I probably you? am, but look at that first. I know, it's just amazing. gorgeous. It's so fun. Oops, Again, this, is the, the first, there, this is the first year. Did we have a blueberry down? No, I just, uh, the shot got a little erratic while oh, I okay. ate a blueberry. <laughs> while you were, while you were <laughs> noshing on a blueberry. I took a second for Stuart. But it's so fun. And actually, I've already harvested some of these blueberries because I've been feeding them to some kids in the neighborhood so that they know where blueberries come from. But I love this. Boy, there's tons on here that are waiting. And while I'm down here, of course, I'm doing a little weeding. <laughs> always, always be on the lookout for little weeds to get them before they get big. Stay on top of it. The garden is never Okay, finished. so I've got a sweet. Now, this isn't very many, but nevertheless, they will hold pride of place <laughs> for a little while until I get some more. Now, something else that is blooming abundantly, which is kind of new to me, my friend Deborah, who lives just a couple of blocks from here, she has harvested I don't know how many service berries. Have you ever eaten a service berry? Not that I'm aware of. They are delicious. So what she's going to bring me. Berry? Well, it's a, a berry from a service berry tree. <laughs> <laughs> so she's going to bring some of those over. But she's gotten, uh, I mean, cups and cups and cups of them. So I may mix these with some service berries and make a little service berry pie. Okay, so I'm going to put this over here before God, I lose I it. I've never heard of a service berry before. Well, I... I had heard of a service berry tree, but I guess I just didn't really know. Please, you guys, if, if you're familiar with them or if you've got any great service berry recipes, make sure to put them in the comments below. And while you're at it, if you are not subscribed, please make sure to subscribe. You know the drill. Hit the thumbs up. Share with others because it's a fun little group of, of followers and viewers. Gardening community we have here. So something else I wanted to show you, which I am very, very thrilled about, is early on in the planting, the installation of the cottage garden here, I sprinkled lots of seeds. And some of the seeds that I sprinkled were golden fever few. And it took them forever to germinate and appear. But look. They're coming. They're coming, and not only are they coming up there, they are coming up all along the edge. So this is what's going to give me that Alcamilla mollis or ladies mantle look that I like. 
that kind of spilling over in in Lady's Mantle's case, it's of a yellow flower that just spills out over the edge. And there's a number of seedlings there, but look over here, Stuart, where the light is a little less harsh. Look how many I have here. Look. We're gonna take them up the whole thing. Wow. Because there's quite a few. There's quite a few that run all up and down this edge. And when they grow up, they'll be this just little chartreuse, blousy feel all the way across the brick border of Autumn's Edge. Here is another thing that I don't know why I haven't done it in the past, but I haven't, probably because I don't regularly grow Dusty Miller, which is one of the toughest annuals that you can grow. In some cases, it perennializes. But one thing that I've done here, because I want these to be big clumps, bushy, again, like many of my inspiration pictures. So Stuart, if you can come over sure. here, one thing that I have been doing regularly is I've been pinching this back, because what I want is a really large mound, rounded mound of gray. So a lot of times, if you don't pinch it back, it just kind of cascades these long leafy branches, which then ultimately bloom. I don't really care so much about the bloom. I just want a mass of rounded foliage. So I just keep cutting it back and snipping it back. Such a cool looking plant. It is cool and it's very, you know, it's very tactile. And by the way, this kind of cutting back or really severe deadheading. I'm getting ready to, to really cut back this again hard. This is a great thing to do right before you go out of town because then while it's recovering, you're on vacation. You don't have and, to see it. And you don't have to see it recovering <laughs> and it does all of the hard work while you are gone. And then you come home and by then it's already started to fill out and it's really, really beautiful. That's smart. It is smart. It's one of those things, do it before you go on vacation. And then it flushes out and, and it's just, it's gorgeous. Look at how, I showed this on Instagram today, how this sunshine lagustrum, it just it glows. Yeah. It, it, it just, it's, <laughs> they're like little garden lanterns and I'm kind of just not hard, not real intentional clipping like I do topiary, but I'm just wanting these to thicken up and get really, really bushy. I've got some blooms on my coneflower. I've been deadheading the candy butterfly. Now I got started on this and I don't want to stop. Well, this is the purpose of the Wednesday walkabout. It walk is about. the purpose of the Wednesday walkabout. And this is one of those things, you guys, do you go out to the garden to do one thing and then you, and then you see something else that needs to be done and you start doing this and then it's not till hours later that you do the original thing because, because you've just been winding around in your garden like a dotted line on a family circle Remember those, those, that cartoon Family Circle or Family Circus that used to be in the papers? Oh, yeah. You know, oh, show yeah. the kids running oh, around yeah. with the dotted lines. That's kind of how I am when I garden. <laughs> okay, look here. Man, if you get it done in hours after you think about it, that's still Th pretty that's good. That's still pretty good. Look at that rose. <laughs> it is putting on all sorts of wonderful buds. All sorts of wonderful buds. And... Where'd she go? Oh, okay, she brought, I'm right, where'd right I go? Where'd I go? Where'd I go? <laughs> I gotta look where you went first. Okay, so I here's can turn. here's another thing that I'm doing while I'm out here is you know plant propagation. And by the way, I will do. I have these dollar scissors, and yes, they're all mucked up and they're muddy because oh. I use them for just this purpose. So I have some of this pure joy sedum. And see how it's gotten leggy right here? 
Let me get down here. They can see okay, that can better. See? That's yeah. better, yeah. I've shown you this before, but if you are new to this channel, first of all, welcome. So I'm just cutting this back so I can make some new tufts in other places. So I'm propagating this, spreading it around. I do this with other forms of succulents too. A couple weeds while I'm down here. But look here. Oh, okay, hold on. <laughs> I already got but it. But you are prematurely. Okay. But look. <laughs> but look. See all of the new tinies that are coming up? And it's almost when it's in this tiny leaf form that I love it the best. I know some of you are going to fuss at me and say, for goodness sake, Linda, bring a basket with you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, look over here. This is where I have tucked in and started some new clumps by this very technique. See that little clump here? And I created that little clump. There's a weed. I created that little clump just by doing this. I just take the succulents. It's just a really cool thing. Isn't it? Yeah, and, and you can do, and like I say, succulents, you can do it at any time. It doesn't have to be before or after a rain. Suc because succulents, well, they're called succulents for a reason. And so then all of these little clumps will grow together and become a big clump. And look, while I'm down here, I'm always looking for what I can see. And there's another little seedling. And this is where seedling recognition is really important, where you can tell the difference between a little seedling like this, which is an unwanted tree volunteer, and I can pick it, versus seedlings like this that I've come to recognize and I'm gonna leave them alone. And here's another little weed seedling over here. And again, no weed seedlings are too small to go ahead and pick. You may think, oh, think, oh that's just, you know, that's not a problem right now, but it will be a problem later. And right now where they're small, they're just so easy. So it's kind of like a game where I'm just looking for the Where's Waldo seed. <laughs> the other thing that I'm looking for when I, I like spot term. seedlings, and that is any plant, even if it's a real plant and not a weed, if it's not in the space where you want it, then you can consider it a weed or a weed that you're going to relocate. So right here, I have some celosia that's coming up and it's too close to this better boxwood village. So I'm going to, not right now because it's a little bit hot, but later this evening or tomorrow morning when it's cooler, I'm going to relocate this to another space where it will have the freedom to grow and self-actualize into its full beauty. While I'm here, I am going to pinch it, however but I will transplant it because I, I just don't want it here. And so I will relocate it into a void, which is another way of completely filling up all of your spots. And that's what I wanna do right now. I wanna to get to the point where all of the stepping stones are almost completely obscured, where you see very little some, because I always like some negative space, but very little of the mulch and just the ground in general. And, and also in that regard, it will be so densely packed that weeds won't get the light that they need to even be able to germinate. So that's my thinking, is planting densely. Okay, Stuart, let's come down here. because I want to show several things. Look at how beautifully these urns are filling out and you can see the same practice here. Well, I'm, no, I've got one more, okay. Where I am just taking these tendrils. I might even in this case take two of them. And I'm gonna secure them to the soil and then they will bloom this way more abundantly and along the perimeter. So I really like the way that will look. Now, a dilemma that I had, you guys gave me great feedback and I, 
and I tried, I tried a number of those different things. And that was that the scale of the upper urns just didn't seem to be large enough. And they needed to see, they needed to have more presence than these on the lower, lower terrace. So here is a solution to that problem. Now, solution number one was you guys recommended, and it is something that I thought of, and I did execute it. Um, and that's by putting another, and I could have done multiples, but I just put another paver underneath it so that the base was just a little bit more prominent. And so it elevated it. But what really did the trick, and that worked, but it still wasn't doing exactly what I wanted. I wanted more volume and more presence up here. So what did work, look at these great two tours that are in here still. That's good. These great wire eggshell two tours. Now these, the small ones were in my QVC lines. These are some larger ones that I already had that I purchased at a nursery. Uh, and sadly, the ones on QVC are all sold out. But look at how great this looks. So now all of a sudden, these have the larger presence and make more of a dramatic statement than the lower ones. So overall, the scale of them looks much larger. See, I did it on both sides over here too. And then I can train some of these climbers to grow up it. And then I'll also have more vertical showiness. Pretty clever, huh? Pretty clever. Pretty clever. I could have also put some two tours in here. I could have done some different things, but I think this worked out really well. And when you stand back, and actually these aren't exactly the same, but from a distance, particularly as the foliage fills them out, it doesn't really matter because it reads the same. The bulkiness and the visual weight of these are just larger. Can you see that from that standpoint? That's, I think so. It's a little yeah. sunny, hard to tell, but I think so. Yeah, and it's kind of also hard because does that help when I stand? Oh, no, I meant just for my own eyes. I'm having okay. to squint, sorry. Yeah. So, <laughs> so this did what I wanted. Um, another thing that I'm excited about is look, and it's, it's mowing day, but look at how great my grass is filled in. It's pretty, pretty lush. Pretty good. And, and every other day I've been coming out with my push reel mower. <laughs> and having fun mowing it. Really easy to use that on this hill. This isn't in quite as good a shape, but it's almost it's filled in. Pretty close. I would say in a week, it will be almost filled in in totality. And then there's a few weeds I'm still working on and I will address, and I will address those. Now here is also something very fun. Look at my first blooms on my apple blossom roses. Look, I mean, look, at these are just packed with buds. So as they put on girth, it's going to be amazing when I have this just river, a river of apple blossom cascading down this side, this side, and also on the western boundary or eastern boundary, I should say, of of the property. And you can see these are starting to bloom too. And I really, really love that. And these will put out a secondary flush of bloom. That They are remondent bloomers. They're repeat bloomers. Of course, I'm going to have to deadhead them. When it gets really hot, they're not going to bloom nearly as profusely as they do in the spring but in the fall when they put out another blush of bloom against this purple obsession mandina, I think it's just gonna be brilliant. And this will be a wonderful, wonderful Ooh, look at those canvas. Pink ones over there, purple. Yeah, yeah, this. These are some of these just really deep fuchsia flocks. Stands flux. out, that's for sure. Stands out. And in the evening, when you just, when everything just kind of hovers, over and you just catch the tops with all of the blooms and it's backlit by the western sun it's absolutely incredible 
Now here is another gardening tip, pruning tip. So what I like <clears throat> is the illusion of things kind of rolling down the hill. So it's kind of taller in the back and shorter in the front. And you can, even in a flat surface, though this does have some topography to it, but even on a flat surface, you can simulate this effect just by how you prune your different shrubs and your different perennials. So what I try to do is accentuate the slope and the pattern of growth by pruning. Now, ideally, you would not have muddy scissors to do this, <laughs> but right now I do. What I can do is prune these shrubs on an angle like this, lower in the front and higher in the back. And then that gives the illusion, even if this were on a flat surface, that gives the illusion of it being higher or taller in the back and lower in the front and as if it is running down a slope. And it's a great way to prune things if, for example, some of you have mentioned that any of the barberries, they just, they get too prickly for you um, and you don't like that or they get too tall, then just when the growth is still new and succulent, just get your long sheared pruners, long bladed pruners, and I'll put my favorite Barnell, uh, in fact, I think it's a permanent link below yeah. of the Barnell shears and just clip them on that same angle, lower in the front and taller in the back. And it's easy to do. At that point, they are not thorny. It makes them very, very bushy and it makes them that much more valuable as a ground cover. So I'm talking about ground covers today, I guess. <laughs> Shrubs as ground covers, like this wonderful Kaleidoscope abelia, a juga, and then your flowers and your annuals as ground covers because they just cover the ground so quickly with their voluptuousness. Something else that I'm doing right now that I am giving the Chelsea chop to are my asters. My friend Gail Wynn gave me a bunch of asters from her garden and I've got spots of them scattered all through Autumn's Edge. And what I'm doing is I am keeping them, you can see one in the back, I have not done. Can you see that one right there that's kind of weedy, Yeah. tall and weedy? That one I have not chopped back. This one I have. And look at all of the new growth that's flushing out, which means more abundant blooms in the fall, a prettier plant right now. And I am also delaying bloom because those, if I let them continue to bloom or to continue to grow, they would bloom for me prematurely. I don't want them to bloom until later in the summer. So I can delay the bloom. I can influence the size and the shape of the growth and make blooms more abundant just by clipping them or doing the Chelsea chop, which is you just kind of whack them off. You can do that with scissors. You can do them with long handle. Pruners. That should be a dance move. Yes. Everybody do the Chelsea chop. Now, everybody do the Chelsea chop. Now, another way that I have spread my succulents, I got these fabulous purple hued succulents from Brex the other day. Oh, look at the, yeah, those are cool on the end down there. Yeah, okay, that, see that? Uh -huh. That's the flower. It's pretty cool. But what I did was I just, Here's, here's the mother plant, the mother plant right here. And I just clipped it. Again, it will get far bushier there where I clipped it. And then I can create a whole nother tuft of this just by sticking it in the ground at any time of day, at any time of year. It might complain and wilt a little bit, but I promise you it's going to root. So consequently, here's another tip. When I buy succulents, I typically don't buy as many of them as I do other plants because I know that they are so, so easy to propagate. And pretty soon, I'm gonna have these fiery red blooms, probably in late summer, early, early fall, 
that will be gorgeous all up and down this expanse of Autumn's Edge. And I love the way that will look. And I think it'll be brilliant, especially if I put pumpkins and things in here. So another great ground cover idea. And look at how my little boxwood villagers, villages with villager weeds, I need to pull some villager weeds, um, are filling in down here. Look at all that light green new growth. So pretty soon there will be this rhythm and repetition of green, green, purple, 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 green, green on the end. So it will look very harmonious and flow from one point of the flower bed to the other point. And this is basically how you design plants from the beginning is intermittent groupings of plants to give visual weight. And the other thing this will do is I'll have these same intermittent groupings of plants in winter when the deciduous uh, shrubs and such lose their foliage. I'll still have the presence of this evergreen weight right here, which I think will, will be really, really lovely. When I'm adding plants, whoo, that's a loud truck. When I'm adding plants later, like originally, I put in the boxwood, the, the boxwood globs, the boxwood villages. Then I came back in with the Obsession Nandina globs in rhythm and repetition. Then I came in with the next layer of the succulents. I did the same thing. I just chose the rhythm and repetition in the negative spaces to fill that in. Make sense, Stuart? It's like art. It's like art. It's like, you know, it's like garden design. Yeah, it is. So coming back up here, and yes, so, so many of you asked me if I was going to get this fixed, this crack fixed, and yes, I am. Here's my Encore Azalea and Southern Living sign. It's gonna be relocated on, an, on another exposure right now. Um, but yes, this crack will be fixed probably at the same time that I redo the steps in the back so that I've got economies of scale and the guys don't need to come out more than once. Um, but I really love the way, I love the way it's looking along here. And just imagine when these are twice their size and they will really make a formidable presence that I think will be beautiful. Look at this diamond spire gardenia there, Stuart. It's already had one complete flush of bloom and it's blooming again. It's got tons of buds on it to rebloom. Love, love, love that. Okay, so now should should we reveal the big change of, it, yeah. of the comment that you guys made and I thought about it and I really was okay with the, the, the decision I had made but I took into account a lot of your comments and I made a change and I like it so much better. So <laughs> thank you to all of you who said and who told me that they really thought my umbrella on the social patio should be gray. <laughs> so I was making it consistent with the concrete and because in my mind, I thought a lighter umbrella would not absorb as much heat that it would keep this area from looking, well, let's say maybe a little too dark and foreboding. Uh, but I knew I also wanted an umbrella for the back. So I moved the other one to the back and I got a gray umbrella for the front, not black. And by the way, I researched it. Does a black umbrella really make it hotter underneath? And it does not. I read several articles on that before I made another purchase. And I got this gray one, and I think it looks fabulous from the street. I just bought this online. It was at a lower price point, actually. I really like the way it looks. 
We've, I've kept it up, gosh, practically the entire time for the last week because it's not been windy at all. And it has provided much needed shade, especially in the, in the late afternoon. Now, by the way, this very, very heavy base is on wheels. So I can just wheel it for morning sun or for protection from late afternoon sun. I just wheel it across the patio and it's not that difficult and it makes it eminently more practical. Again, I loved it because it's got this faux wicker, weatherproof wicker look to it, which matches my little storage bin here of faux wicker and and i could not find a link to this same one but i will put up a link to another one that's equally as good looking has the same faux wicker look to it and is equally as practical in using it both as a side table and as uh and as a storage unit so stewart that was kind of a long walk it about was. i think i think they'll like it um, they liked it <laughs> if, if you've got any comments, please put them below. I thank you. You guys go out and do your own Wednesday walkabout. And if you have lots of observations, just keep those in the back of your head because you might want to record them when you get my garden journal when it comes out in November. At least I hope that you will anyway. And as always, you can still find my book, The Elegant and Edible Garden, blah, 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 blah. Thank you. Thank you for listening to my commercial and you guys enjoy the rest of your Wednesday.